I haven't done one of these in a while, but since I want to talk about it and since getting that book club up is uh, <laughs> taking some time. Pray for me, y'all. I decided it would be great to do a review of Tyere Jones. I hope I'm saying her name correctly. Her book, An American Marriage. Hey guys, it's Julesy. If you are new here, please subscribe because whether you like it, love it, or don't agree at all, this is about encouraging a critical dialogue. So join in and comment along. Engage respectfully and thumbs up because you know it helps. I read this book from cover to cover on a flight to Vancouver and girl, I was on the plane in my feelings. This book just feels so, it feels so familiar. As it follows newlywed Celestial and Roy, they've been married for about a year and a half. Celestial, the only child of an upper middle class black, black, uh, black family from Atlanta. And Roy from a small town in Louisiana where he grew up with his two working class black parents as an only child. Like I want to say the book is based in like the 1990s, if not late 90s, maybe early 2000s. I think it's definitely set in the age before social media. Graduates of the AUC, Celestia went to Spellman and Roy to Morehouse. It's a Spellhouse kind of love. They are the quintessential bougie black couple. I just felt like I knew them. Like I know, I definitely know a Celestial. We took, we took a graphic design class together at Howard University and she used to just twirl into the classroom like nobody else existed. And she was an amazing painter and I now believe she's like a gemologist and she was from Atlanta too. Girl, like to a T, I know Celestial. I'm telling you the familiarity was strong and I know so, so, so many Roy's, so many men trying to be it at capitalism and present the image of a successful black man. Think like Roy and being married, but still playing numbers and still gambling with the boundaries of monogamy. <laughs> like Roy is, he's not a bad guy. But an argument that him and Celestial had early on in the book about him keeping secrets and the trajectory of the argument. I was like, bruh, that is not what Celestial was saying. Don't gaslight, don't straw man her girl. Stay on topic because I hate when people cannot have linear arguments. I like, oh, it just grates. Yeah, I was definitely invested. The crux of the book is told through the eyes of Celestial and Roy, initially through their voices. Then after Roy is falsely accused of rape and in the blink, literally in the blink of an eye, sentenced to 12 years in prison, the narrative switches to the letters between the two of them. He serves a few years of his term before he's released. And then we are back to Celestial and Roy narrating the story from each of their perspectives. And Celestial's ancient childhood friend, Andre's voice is included. <laughs> I was not asking with that setup, like at all. Like, like nah, bro, just not, nah, just not. Nah. We basically watched their marriage disintegrate during Roy's time in jail. And then Andre, who was Celestial's childhood best friend becomes her lover. And I knew early on that's where the book was going to go. These type of relationships ain't nothing but dick in a glass jar. Mm -hmm. And the loneliness and trauma of watching your husband ripped from your hotel room bed to serving time in a Louisiana prison, pop that jar <laughs> right open. Like Andre was already too much in the mix for my liking before Roy even got put up. So, Ugh. but this book is just captivating. I love how Tayari captures each emotion, the tender fragility of not only their relationship, but their image of self and how they explore that, how they come to conclusions based around that, their own biases that they walked into this relationship with. It is just, hmm. Now, while I absolutely love this book, I do have a few questions and my questions aren't like an indictment against the book. Most of my questions are really based upon the fact that like I felt like I knew Roy and Celestial, like I even knew Andre. And like because I know them, because you know I know them like that, I'm just trying to, I was wondering why they didn't do certain things. Namely, how did both Roy and Celestio go to Morehouse and Spellman being a bougie ass Spellhouse couple and like where the hell are they friends? Like where your friends? You ain't got no friends that work in the government, in law, in the church, friends that are connected. I mean, okay, granted, sure this was before the age of Twitter, but you couldn't one, two, three on your beeper 911 to your network of bougie black folks to campaign against the obviously illegal treatment 
of your husband? How was her uncle the only person that could come to their legal assistance? I, that just didn't, it wasn't adding up for me. Like Celestial's dad is a scientist who successfully sold a patent. I know the Lynx, NAACP, 100 black men, every dad on fraternity if he ain't actually in one, whomever. Damn y'all living, what was it like? Do they live in the Cascade? Whatever part of Atlanta, they, they in the bougie part. Y'all in the mix. It did strike me as odd that they were pretty much beholden to the access of their immediate nuclear families. Roy spent his post-college years climbing the corporate ladder. Where are your co-workers? No one cared that you were gone. How'd you come out of Morehouse with no friends, Negro? Cause like, look, I, and it's, it's, you know, this is a big question for me because I remember I met a guy off Tinder in Dallas who not only, he was from Memphis and he went to Morehouse and he had no black friends. And I was like, bro, I, I said to him, bro, you have to be a terrorist because there is no way you come out of the black ass city of Memphis that you go to black ass historically black ass university of morehouse and don't come out with no negro friends like how you do like what what is wrong with you and so i'm just trying to figure out how roy where were roy friends at what was your people's what was they doing i just kept waiting for their friends to pop up and aside from andre <coughs> That was about it. I do get that in some sense because the book really is about their marriage more than the politics that surround them. You know, I, I get that because because even the way Roy's court case and sentencing, it was so quickly and neatly wrapped up in a few pages. It's not really like more like a few paragraphs. It kind of just happened and now we're dealing with it. <laughs> And then that was like it. And so I feel like the narrative of the book really is more about the intimate space that exists in a marriage and not about all these outside people. Um, you know, the only other thing that really stuck in my mind is how Roy's story ends. This is kind of gonna be a, um, a spoiler, spoiler alert, cause I'm gonna address the ending of the book. But uh, I think there's so much detail and, just the way the story is told that even if you watch past this, you still need to go back and read the book because it's just a good book. But I didn't really care for the way they wrapped up Roy's story because like, again, I know Roy. Like I, I felt like I knew him very well. And I just feel like the Roy I know would not end up with a woman who works at Walmart in a small town, Louisiana. Mmm, I mean, I totally understood him getting his dick wet with her, five years in jail, in prison. <laughs> and let me not ruin too much of the book here. But like, I, I get it, you know, since there was that whole motif with the whole setup of like how the condom comes into play with Roy post getting out of prison. I get that. <clears throat> <clears throat> but to get to go back to the fact that Roy is a graduate of Morehouse, um, <clears throat> I just feel like there should be more ambition. Like, you know, that type of Morehouse ambition that does not settle for less. And I just don't understand how he so quickly recoils after wrongful, wrongful imprisonment. Like I, I take this book happens sometime in the, the, end, the end of the 20th century. This was not early 20th century. This was not 1920. We done had some progress here now. Am I wrong? Am I wrong? They don't sue the government. <laughs> they don't sue anyone. He kind of just gets out and it's just like, I don't feel like dealing with the hassle. He doesn't, he, so he doesn't look back towards the wrongful imprisonment, but he does look back towards the home that no longer is his home. Ah oh, man. I'm gonna have to get this book club together because there are things that like I could only discuss if you have read the book because the 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 motif of what home means really struck me especially as a person who is not landlocked I am not a person who's tethered to any locale which is why I'm so comfortable with moving so often but just even this whole kind of message and motif of how what home means particularly to black people and how we can construct home and how, you know, like Roy comes from this small town and clearly wants to get out and move move on and build home elsewhere. Storyline can be applied to so many different walks of life and different ways in which many of us not necessarily come from the homes that we want to be our foundation because we want to have greater ambition. Um, but even like, how do you construct family? Like all that goes into the narrative of who Roy is 
as a person like how does family actually work how does family and home work you know home is in the heart or is home in the land all those things kind of tie into the end of the book still with the wrapping up of Roy's story of him going back to like his literal hometown just him being a Morehouse man and having gone through the wrongful imprisonment and not at all like there is no accosting of that experience i personally just did never saw, would never see a roy ending up with davina back in what is it alexi aloy louisiana but at worst i thought he would teeter on the edge of hotepism you know but that brand that like starts the after school programs for young boys the kind that does kind of you know rest firmly in the patriarchy but at best he would still be doing some sort of community nonprofit work while branding himself because one thing more house men know how to do is brand themselves says they never turn a branding opportunity on turn <laughs> girl we all know annoyingly so it struck me as where they in no way sense or shape like even and how he went to pursue work or pursue moving his forward life for it did he on any level attempt to brand himself around being an advocate for the wrongly incriminated and maybe i'm going too far because i think roy settled into a space of exhaustion which i mean that obviously it makes sense but to settle so low into it so kind of like proudly like because you know the ending correspondence is through letters between him and celestio and so he is telling celestio with some sort of pride you know his state of being and where he's at in life right now i just mm, if i could give one firm criticism the end of the book was too simplistic too hum ho for the emotional buildup of the book but this is such a beautiful read through and through and my want for roy and celestial to go in certain directions comes from the writing making me feel so damn like i know these niggas like i know them like they my friends for real for real matter of fact let me go call my homeboy that reminds me of roy and tell him to go read this book <laughs> all right i'm out deuces